crack cocaine, how I got addicted was I used to sell drugs and then one day I decided to try it myself and that's how I got addicted to it. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Welcome guys. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you're here again. Hey, let's get right off into this. Hey, today I want to share this uh, video with you by William McKellar. He gives his testimony of how God delivered him from crack, from crack cocaine. And so we're going to look at this video. It's not long, but hey guys, I pray that you will stay to the end because after this video finishes, I'm going to come back on and I'm going to wrap it up with some things that I want to show you the comparisons of how he got delivered and what I've been saying. And even with the 12 steps of recovery, how there's a certain principles involved and they're, they're key to our recovery. So guys, if you would stay till the end and I'm going to come back and discuss that with you. So without further ado, let's roll it. William McKellar. How long were you a drug addict? 17 years. Doing time in jail? Yes. I did a nine months. Could have did a lot more, but I did nine months one time. William, how does somebody that's addicted to crack cocaine for seven years get off of that? It's got to be a miracle. 17 years. How does somebody do that? How do you get off of it? Got to find out. How did, how did God find you? It was on a Friday morning, June the 14th, 1997. I was just tired of using it, and I asked God to remove that addiction from my life, and he did. And I found that I have not had to use any more since then. So, but uh, I found God because that's who I needed. You know, and I, I was, I never was a person of prayer, of prayer. And then that particular day, I just turned and prayed to God and asked him to remove that addiction from my life. And I also, during that prayer, I told him I'd rather be dead than keep on living like this. You know, because it was a horrible, it was a horrible, horrible, horrible life. I was homeless, almost dead. And I was just tired. And, I found God and I've been moving forward ever since. You're working in a church now? Yes, I do. Tell us about what you do at the church. I do prison ministry, support of our church. I, uh, I'm a music coordinator for the church. I go out and I do the food pantries and stuff like that for the church. I help out with uh, all the men stuff that need to be done around the church and whatever of all services that I can be to the church. That's what I am today. Now, William, if somebody else is struggling with alcohol or drug addiction, what would you tell them to do to overcome this problem? I would tell them that if they're really sick and sick and tired of using and, and, and really ready to give it up, I would say give it to God. Keep your hands out of it. Let God do for you what you couldn't do for yourself, because if you could do it yourself, you'd have stopped or you never did it. So I would always say to anyone, let God do for you what you can't do for yourself. Keep your hands out of it. Let God put his hands in it. <laughs> you know? And I, I say that because, like I said, I couldn't stop until I found God. You know, it wasn't about anything else. I'd been to 50 addiction places until I found out I couldn't stop. And, you so know, you would say Jesus is the answer? Jesus is the answer. It's the only answer. Because, see, in order for me to stay stop, then once I do get clean, what I have to remember, too, is I got to have a made-up mind. And I can't stay clean on the same mind that got me clean. I gotta, now I got to put out there some work. I got to do some things, and I got to get involved and do things to keep myself clean. And that's how I got involved in the church and with Pastor John and them and started doing a lot more things. Today, I have a full plate every day. I do something every day. 
I go out to schools and stuff and talk to kids about the use of drugs. I've done that on several occasions. I've been a national speaker at a couple of conventions, uh, Narcotics Anonymous, different things like that. So, you know, it's just been a, it's been a real journey, but it's a hard road, but the road continues. You know, and what we have to remember is that once an addict, always an addict. I'm just not a practicing addict. Wow. Yeah. Now, John, let me, uh, let me ask you this. I'm sorry, I said your name wrong. Let me ask you this. If somebody can't admit that they're doing something wrong, can they get help? Do you have to admit that you're helpless and you got to get over this? Until you can get honest with yourself, you're not going to be able to get over it anyway. See, because it really doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't really matter what she thinks. It doesn't really matter what anybody thinks. What really counts is what do I feel and think about myself. I can't do it for nobody else. I have to do it for me. You know, I tried that. I smoked up two houses, two wives, six kids, all that stuff. And until I decided that I could do it for me, I couldn't quit. You know, because that's always been a crutch to run back to. Something, you know, that's why we have to remember that once in that, we're always in that. And people going, some people are going to forgive you and some people who are not. You know, we did a lot of horrible things out there using. Some of the same people that hated me yesterday loved me to death today because they seen my walk and not my talk. So, You've been forgiven. Right, 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 right. So, you yeah, know. Once a sinner, always a sinner. Right. The difference is some of us are saved because we gave our life to Jesus Christ. And what we have to really, this is the most important part. God forgave you a long time ago. God forgave you the day you was born when he died on the cross for you. You know, all your sins were, 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 were saved then. We got to learn how to forgive ourselves so we can move on. You know, that's very important that you can learn how to forgive yourself. Okay, guys, I pray that that video has blessed you. But hey, let's talk about one of the first things when I watched that video, and I'm sure some of you probably caught, was the fact that he was tired. He was tired of being tired, tired of being sick and tired. And that's one of the things, man, because sometimes we think we're at that point, but we've got another run in us. And that's only for each individual to know and to do. But I do know from my experience, when I got to my lowest and I got to that one final time where I knew, man, I am done with this. I had said that plenty of times before, but at this point in time, it resonated all through my soul. I knew I had to do something different. And maybe you're at that point because guys, you know, addiction is, is cunning, baffling, and it's powerful. And we can think we're ready, but we still want to still dibble and dabble. And we, we still want to go back out there. This video is for those of you that are at the end of the road and man, you are ready. You are tired of being sick and tired. And so, but that's one of the things that I, I saw, and that's how, as you get into 12-step recovery, you know, it, it talks about we were sick and tired of being sick and tired. We came to the end of the road. I'm kind of paraphrasing all of this, but the same principle goes across all, all, all boards of recovery. You got to be tired. And you got to be wanting to change. The second thing we look at is how he said he gave it over to God. And that's a step in, and that's a that's a step in a, a twelve step program. We became willing to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. And that's the thing, man. See, people want to get recovered, but they want to recover on their on their on, on their their way. And you got so many people telling you, man, this road is narrow to get off drugs. You can't sit here and try to dictate your own recovery program. There's countless of people that God has delivered and he wants to deliver you. But we got to have a mindset to say, God, please help me. And in that, man, just understand and know God is faithful. He will do it. But we can't be asking God to help us. And we still want it. We still dibble and dabble. I ain't going to say we still want to, because a lot of times we still want to. But, man, we got to have the wherewithal to you, you got to pull out all stops. 
because there's just some things people can't do for you. But you know not to go over here. You know not to talk to that person. You know when the feelings are coming on you and you know you need to talk about it. These are the things that we can do, bro. Because, man, listen, this this, this 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 spirit, this disease, however you want to call it, man, this thing is trying to kill you. It tried to kill me. And so when we get in recovery, man, we got to become like little children, don't know nothing, just absorb everything. Because the truth of the matter is, we can't come into this thing acting like, oh, we won't, we won't recovery, but we want to do it on our terms and our conditions and how we want to recover. It don't work like that, man. It don't work like that. You got to adhere to a program and you got to adhere to it. <laughs> hey, man. But, you, you know, but getting back to the video and then the third thing, he did works of service. He, he, he started getting involved in the church. He started doing things. He started, he started giving back. And as, and, and, in, and in recovery, that's another principle is we give back. You know, we, 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 we share our strengths, our experience, our experiences and our hopes. And that's what, you know, whether it be a YouTube channel, whether it be going speaking, which I really want to start doing that and I'm going to do it, but we got to get back. Once we get on, and you don't have to wait till you've got 18 years clean. You no, know, when you get on that path and you, you're running a path, because this is what strengthens you in the journey. When you get your mind, your mind starts to get clear, begin to give back to others. Don't let nobody tell you, well, you ain't got enough time clean. The devil is a lot. Because if you've got a month clean and you're talking to a person that's using now, hey, you got a month of experience. Use that and grow on it, man. Quit letting people get in our minds thinking that we got a certain way to do this. God will direct you. God will bring people your way in your two-month having recovery, but God will bring somebody for you to help. So all this, you got to have to, to, no, man, forget that. This is your recovery program, and you try to help the best you can. You may not be able to help somebody that's got 18 years clean, but if you got 18 days or 18 months, pour whatever you have into that person, and that's how we grow from step to step. Amen? <laughs> so look, guys, recovery is possible. You heard the man. It took God. And if you want to go other route than God, God bless you. You, this ain't what this channel's about. This is about telling the lost people, the lost souls out there, telling those that are bound by drugs and alcohol. This is what this pro, this this channel is about: is is bringing them to God. And at that point, I can't do nothing else. <laughs> I bring you to God and let Him do the rest. But you got to be willing to come to God, because man, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Boy, trust me. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. So, hey, guys, I pray this blessed you. You guys stay motivated, my friends, and I'll see you on the next one.